Hi everyone. So after being ill for the last three weeks with the flu, I finally was able to get out. And with a friend, we decided to check out this Asian store in our city. I had been told that they sell Filipino food products here, so I was pretty excited. I was glad to see these items, but reminder to self, do not buy rice in this place. It was crazy expensive compared to other Asian stores in town. That same evening, I cooked sardinas with miswa for dinner. It brought back so many childhood memories. A few days later, our daughter left for a foreign exchange program in Germany. That day was so stressful. There was a national strike, so her train was canceled. It started snowing. We had to call a taxi. The first taxi didn't wait for us. We had to call another one. Then Bogart the Pug cried in my arms for an hour. Oh, they experienced riding a Tesla for the first time. And then our daughter's phone SIM card slowly stopped working. Oh, it was too much for me to handle so early in the morning. Thankfully, the week went by quickly. We hung out at home after work, watched series. We finished You Season 4, The Sinner Season 4, and Sex Life. I cooked air-fried honey soy chicken. Check out the recipe video if you haven't yet. There wasn't much to do as the weather was pretty wet, pretty windy, and pretty cold all week long. Just the way I hate it. Check out the wind. Can you hear that? It was bad weather for everyone. <laughs> Thankfully, after the storm finally came the sunshine, just in time for my lunch with girlfriends that weekend. We were celebrating their birthdays. We had lunch at Bouillon Batignol. The burrata was everything I was looking for. Tasty and also oh creamy. That balsamic vinaigrette gives that perfect little kick. The cordon bleu, on the other hand, was a bit of a disappointment. It was too thick for my liking and therefore too dry. Thankfully, it came with a mushroom sauce, which helped a lot. The fries were good, though. For dessert, we went to Café Petit Dessert, which is one of my favorite places ever. Their French toast is to die for. Perfectly caramelized. Each layer of flavor and texture makes this just perfect. Chef's kiss. Then a few days later, baby girl finally came back home. She brought us chocolates as gifts. How very sweet of her. This is the pedestrian part of the city center. There are lots of stores, lots of restaurants, pubs as well. People have noticed that it's been kind of dying these past years with more and more stores closing and transferring to the malls. But I'm hoping that the local government has a plan for the city center.
On the way to the cathedral, the husband wanted to show you these signs we can see on the ground in some places of the city center. We're not sure what they are, but this one has a growly on it. In French folklore, the growly is a creature with the appearance of a dragon. According to legend, it lived in the arena of the Roman amphitheater in Metz. Legends state that Saint Clément of Metz fought against Growly and vanquished the beast. You can find several of these signs in the city. We're not sure what it indicates to you though. Oh, and this one is a house or a building. I need to do my research. Seems like there might be an interesting story behind this. This is our city's cathedral, Cathedral Saint-Étienne de Metz. On our last Christmas video you saw it at night, here it is during the day. We simply love our cathedral and its architecture. The cathedral was built on an ancient site from the 5th century dedicated to Saint-Étienne or Saint Stephen. Metz Cathedral is a rayonnant Gothic edifice built of the local yellow Jaumont limestone. As in French Gothic architecture, the building is compact with slight projection of the transepts and subsidiary chapels. It is 136 meters long and maximum height is 88 meters high. Metz Cathedral has the third highest nave of cathedrals in France, so 41.41 meters behind Amiens Cathedral and Beauvais Cathedral. It is also nicknamed La Lanterne du Bon Dieu, or the Good Lord's Lantern, because it displays the largest expanse of stained glass in the world, with 6,496 square meters. Wow, I could honestly go on and on. It is definitely the landmark to visit when in Metz, as it is beautiful inside and out. Right beside the cathedral, you'll find the city hall, 
Fun fact, this is called Hôtel de Ville in French, but don't be confused with the name. It has nothing to do with hotels. It is, in fact, a government office. In France, there are two names for city hall, Hôtel de Ville and Mairie. Someone has told me that Mairie is used for little cities and towns, whereas Hôtel de Ville is for big cities. Whoever came up with the name must have been in a mood that day, because why would they confuse things like that? Between the city hall and the cathedral is the Office of Tourism. I've honestly never been inside, so I wouldn't be able to tell you what they do. I'm assuming, though, that they probably help and accompany tourists that wish to visit the famous spots of the city. We're lucky that there's a free shuttle from the city center to our home. Living in Metz is quite nice. It isn't a big city like Paris, so obviously there are less activities to do and places to eat and see. This also means that there are less people and tourists, but it is comfortable and rich in architecture and history. Lots of new things have also added themselves to the city. There's been a lot of change. To end the day, I decided to make some Filipino ginataang mongo with pork, which is mung bean and pork cooked in coconut milk. Make sure to check out the recipe video. It is hearty and oh so delicious. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Take care.